Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson. Today, we're going to be talking about PCB edge plating for RF circuit boards. So we got a great viewer question about this, and we're going to dive into this topic in this video, and I'm going to show you the design rules that you need to set in Altium Designer in order to apply edge plating. Let's go ahead and get started. Edge plating is sometimes used in RF PCBs for a couple of different reasons. So the first reason is to use it as a form of shielding. Essentially, if you take that edge plating and ground it, you are creating a big fat Faraday cage around the edge of your board, and that provides shielding from electromagnetic emissions away from the edge of the board. The second reason you could use edge plating in a PCB is if you have a shielded enclosure. By putting edge plating around that PCB, it allows your shielding in your enclosure to make direct contact with a very large block of metal directly on the PCB. So it's kind of like putting a big chassis guard ring around the edge of a board, except instead of just sitting on the surface layers, it can wrap all the way around the edge of the board and it can make multiple points of contact with the shielded enclosure. Essentially, it's like placing a big fat shield around your circuit board and it helps prevent any radiated emissions from the board from escaping away from the enclosure and it ultimately helps you comply with EMC requirements. So edge plating is commonly used in RF PCBs for some of the reasons I just mentioned and there are different ways to put it onto a PCB. So let's just suppose that this is our board edge here. Now edge plating, of course, is meant to wrap around this board edge and then wrap up to the top layer to a certain extent. So this uh, black line here essentially represents my edge plating and it's supposed to wrap up and then over the top to some level. Now, the edge plating that you see here could essentially encapsulate the entire edge of the PCB back to some pretty large distance if you want. However, there is going to be some minimum distance here that you need to allow the edge plating to span over to the other side of the board. Now, the edge plating profile that you have here is really going to depend on your manufacturer's capabilities and what they recommend you do. Not all manufacturers will offer edge plating services. It's not necessarily that they can't all do it, it's just that not all of them will offer it. So make sure that you vet your manufacturer's capabilities and discuss with them what you can do in your design before you just start throwing edge plating everywhere. So your edge plating will start on one layer, essentially as a pour, and then it will have to wrap all the way around an end on this other side of the board. What you shouldn't do is have it end essentially like this, where it ends just on the edge of the board. So there is going to be some minimum span over here over some distance. So again, make sure that you get that minimum span across the other side of the board from your manufacturer. Now you could also have your edge plating essentially do this kind of thing, where it just wraps around the edge like this. And this is something that you might do, for example, if you're going to put castellated holes into a design. So this is the side view, but if we look from the top view, essentially we would have our circuit board in this region. We would have this be the border of our plating, and then our plating would essentially span over like this. And then if we were going to use this for castellated holes, we would essentially have a half hole placed here, and then this would all be plated along the entire edge of the board. This could then be used as a solder point. Um, so this is something that you'll see on some SMD modules where they allow soldering along this point on the board so that we can mount it to a baseboard. Um, so there are some popular microcontroller modules that will do this. So what are some typical values for this distance? Well, these distances can be pretty small if you think about it. So even small PCBs can have this kind of edge plating. Now, if you look on, for example, American Standard Circuits, they have a pretty good guide on edge plating. I've also have a guide on uh, resources.altium.com uh, that's linked in the description, so you can go check out that blog. Um, but American Standard Circuits specifies essentially a 15 mil distance here or overlap here over the board edge. So these are the kinds of values that you should uh, 
expect your fabricator to require if you're going to add edge plating to a design. What about clearances from edge plating to other components? Well, there will be some etch clearance that you have to apply here between the plating edge and then some other piece of copper on the other layer. And the same thing would apply down here. Let's say we have it down here on this side. We could also just have essentially the plating just doing this and maybe the clearance has to happen over here somewhere. But in any case, when you have this clearance between this end of this edge plating and then this other etched copper feature, this could be on the order of, again, 10 mil. So this is again what American Standard Circuits recommends. There are other companies out there that will recommend similar values or similar specifications uh, for their edge plating. That's essentially what you can expect in terms of the clearances that you have to enforce if you're going to put edge plating onto a PCB. If you are going to add edge plating to a PCB and you look at it from the top view, what you have to consider is the fact that this board, once it gets plated, is going to be part of a panel. And because it's part of a panel, there may be some tab on that panel that is holding this board in place. And so what you have to do is you have to leave room for one of those tabs in order to hold this board in its panel so that you can do the plating process. So what that means is that you may not be able to have totally continuous edge plating around all four edges of the PCB. The result is that you may need to have an opening here where you have essentially discontinuous plating like this, and then the PCB edge is essentially right here. And right here at this point is where you would then have the attachment back to the panel. So the panel is gonna attach here, they're gonna do the plating process, and then this tab is gonna get broken off or routed off in order to detach the plated PCB from the panel. And that's gonna give you your final board. So you may have these discontinuous areas of copper pour in your PCB. So that's something else to consider. The other point to consider here is when we have this plating applied along the edge, we generally remove the solder mask from it as well. So this is typically done in RF PCBs. And as I mentioned earlier, you may be putting this inside of a shielded enclosure. That shielded enclosure may need to actually make physical contact with the copper here because this could be a ground connection on this edge plating. And so in order to make that direct connection to this copper edge plating, uh, it needs to be exposed. And the only way to do that is, of course, to remove the solder mask. So to do that, you would want to put openings in your solder mask layer in your PCB. You can do that as polygons, you can do it as fills, whatever objects in your PCB editor will allow you to define an opening. You just want to make sure that you specify that wherever the contact point is going to be on your edge plating. Now, one thing that you can do is you can actually metalize those tabs that are used to hold the board in its panel before you actually apply the plating process. So that might look something like this. Here's our board edge, and then here's the tab coming out to the edge of our panel. Now, what you can do is in your panel, you can actually have all of this pre-plated with copper so that you actually do have some plating on that top layer and you don't have that interruption that I showed in the earlier segment. When you have this plating like this, what's gonna happen is the rest of this area here and here is then gonna get plated up in the plating process. Afterwards, you can come back here and detach the board from its panel as normal. And so all that's going to do is just leave an opening on the side right here along this line where the tab was located rather than leaving not just the side open, but also the top region open as we showed earlier. So there are a couple of different ways to do it. Make sure, of course, that you are in charge of designing the tab into your board as well as the panel because you're gonna need to design that available copper into the panel if your PCB fabrication house doesn't provide that service. Now, a lot of PCB fabrication houses that specialize in edge plating, they will actually do this for you, or they'll at least give you a template that will help you do this. So they'll help you along and make sure that you put in the required tab in your panel in order to successfully plate this. So the last point to note about these tabs is that this could actually be a perforated tab rather than a solid tab. So if it's a perforated tab, 
you need to put these little mouse bites here into the edge right along this tab and make sure that those mouse bites just line up right along here with the edge of your PCB. And that way this can be broken off rather than routed. So you can actually do it either way. You can do it the routing method that I showed earlier, or you can place mouse bites and do a perforated tab so that it just snaps off when you're taking this board out of its panel. So now that we've looked at some of the DFM considerations, let's take a look at how to do this inside of a CAD program. So I have one of the projects that we just did recently, our RF power amplifier module. I'm gonna take that project and we're gonna set up the design rules that we need inside of that project in order to apply edge plating. So I have our power amplifier module open. You can see here that we have polygons on all four layers extending over to the board edge. Now, what we wanna do is we want to do a couple of things. First, we need to modify the board outline clearance rule because you can see up here, I have some board outline clearance being enforced, even though if I select this polygon, you can see it runs right up to the edge. So after we modify that board outline edge clearance, then we can extend the polygon over the edge. After we extend it over the edge, we need to apply that extension to all four layers. In my opinion, the easiest way to apply that extension to all the layers is to just apply it to one of the layers. And then after you apply it to one of the layers, you then just copy this polygon down to the other layers. The easiest way to do this and get it to a very accurate extension over here by just one or two mils, which will be the thickness of your plating, is to basically just drag this over and take advantage of the grid feature. Now, my grid size here, you can see, is about five mils. Here it's actually snapping to 10 mils. So I'm okay with that. I'm just gonna leave it at 10 mils on the edge and I can go up to all my edges and then apply that same expansion here out from the edge. Now you'll notice it triggers a design rule error. That's okay, once we re-pour the polygon, that error will clear. And you can see here that even if I were to take this and just immediately re-pour, it's still going to enforce that board outline edge clearance. So that's the main thing that we need to modify. So to do this, we just go into design and rules, and then here we wanna create a new rule if we don't have one already. Here you can see I have the in, ground net, and is polygon rule. So this is the rule that we would need. Here what we're gonna do is modify the expansion of our ground polygons so that they are allowed to extend over the board. And so the way that we do that is we can apply a negative value for this expansion. So I'm gonna apply just, let's say a negative two mil value. Hit apply and then hit okay. And once we do that and re-pour, you can now see that the polygon extends over the edge of the board. And you can see that on all four sides. Here, if I just copy this and then I delete the inner layer polygons, I'll be able to then move copies of this top polygon into my inner layers. This is pretty simple. I just go into the properties panel to do this and then just keep pasting my polygon back onto my top layer, select it and then move it down and it'll get moved down into all of the other layers. Once I have this done, just hit TGA, re-pour everything. And now we have our polygon extension over the actual board outline into the other layers and that's what we're gonna need for edge plating. So the next thing that we would need to do if we wanted to expose some of this edge plating, let's say for use in a shielded enclosure, what we then need to do is draw out a solder mask opening on this top layer. We would wanna do the same thing on the bottom layer, but what we can do is just draw it out on the top layer once, and then we can just copy it down to the other layer. To do that, what we wanna do is use the line tool. You could use the rectangle tool if you want. Um, you can use the line tool just kind of for a general shape in your board, but I prefer the line tool sometimes. I'm gonna do this with the rectangle tool. Here, we need to set a width for our opening. So what kind of width do we want? Well, let's just go ahead and go with, let's say 20 mils, just for fun. So that's gonna cover decent size here. What we can do is then just use the board snap. Now we have our solder mask opening around the edge. And we can of course go back and modify this. I could set it to let's say 50 mils. Now you'll notice here again, that solder mask opening is gonna to continue to extend across the other edge of the board, as well as into the interior of the board. So make sure that if you use the snap points on the board, just note that the actual solder mask opening that you'll see on the final PCB is not this 50 mils, 
It's this left half here where my mouse is. That's the actual opening that's going to be exposed, and that's going to show the copper. So if I put this in 3D, you can now see the expansion of our plating over the edge. And then you can see here it's exposed through the solder mask. And then we can see, of course, our contact points for our SMA connectors. The next thing we'd want to do is, of course, again, copy this. Take the one that we have, move it down to the bottom solder layer. And we can paste this, and then we're good to go. The last thing that we should note here is that we have some plating wrapping around this point where our edge connector, our SMA connector, is going to make contact with this pad. And we have to actually leave this part open right here. We can't have any of this edge plating blocking this access point for this particular connector. So what can we do about that? Well, what we need to do is then put a polygon cutout right here. So you could draw in a polygon cutout, and what that's going to do is it's gonna open up the edge plating right here in this region. So that's, of course, very important because if you know anything about SMA connectors, they're gonna butt right up against the board edge, and you wanna make sure that you leave some clearance there between this contact point and then anything else on that connector. We would also wanna do that down here as well. We would wanna put a polygon cutout. Finally, once we do that, um, we would then want to specify some locations for tabs for this board so that we can fit this into a panel. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is something that your manufacturer can do for you. Essentially, if you wanted them to do it for you, you could send them a dimensioned drawing of this board and just ask them, hey, where should I put these tabs? Or if they're gonna do it for you, they will apply all of that information when they build your panel and you won't have to worry about it. In a board like this, where we really don't have a lot of stuff along the left and right edges, we could place them just about anywhere along these edges. But this is something where if I were gonna send this into fabrication, I would actually just allow the manufacturer to put it anywhere along the left and right edges as they build up the panel. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. If you want to go ahead and play with the power amplifier module that I showed on screen, go check out the link in the description. In that link, you'll be able to watch our power amplifier design video, and there is a link in that video to download the design files, and you can do whatever you want with that project, and of course, apply edge plating on your own. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, leave your comments and questions in the comments section, and of course, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks.